Saturday, 1st of September, in England they say, pinch, punch, first of the month. That's the first person to, to do it, before you do it, if you do it. The sun has come back, so it's warm again, so it's short season, short season. I had to wait for the car to be serviced this morning at the garage and as there was no Wi-Fi I took the time to to write so I was reflecting on well a verse in the passage which we as a group are contemplating over this two week period It's a verse that you probably may not have heard, or if you have, people would have skipped over quite quickly. So it goes something like this. He or she who wants to be my disciple must hate their mother and father, brothers and sisters, children, and even their own life or something to that effect. Now, if I said to you, who would make a quote like that, you might say to me, a cult leader, a dictator, a despot. But actually, it was the words of uh, Jesus. We have that image, haven't we, of Jesus being meek and mild and love. And I myself speak of that message of love. And yet here we have these very strong words by hate. Hate your mother and father. Hate your own life. Hate your own children. So it would be easy to just skip over it and to ignore that. But perhaps it actually wants us to stop and be shocked in order to ponder what actually is it saying. So, being known for somebody who can go on a bit, I'm going to try and summarize my thoughts on this. I think you have to come to hate your life in the sense of hate is, is strong emotion. Is it as strong as love? Some people might say so. But it's almost that if we haven't got to the boundaries of hate, we can't be transformed by a greater love. So it could be that we experience a love of sorts. But it's a bit like the love that we have for those who we get on with. But not for those that we don't get on with. And what we need is a transforming love. So perhaps in order to get that transforming love, we need to hate. Now this is a very powerful message for anyone who does hate. And indeed I have hated in my life. And indeed I might even hate now. I think it's an uncomfortable emotion and one that we don't readily want to say, I hate. And we definitely don't want to say we hate those closest to us. And so what we might do is we project that hate onto the people we don't like, or the people that we're not supposed to like. And we, we give it to them, and that feels okay and justified because they deserve to be hated. When actually, the hate might be closer to home. When you think about it, there are things that we all do that we hate, even those things done by people close to us, but we just don't want to say it. Anyway, I think the point that I get from this story is in order to experience the fullness of life, now you, you either get this or you won't, and I know it's a bit paradoxical, you kind of have to give up your life. You gotta have to hate your life. You gotta say this is almost an illusory life. A life that 
is built on sand, on mist and smoke and mirrors and all of that and say kind of to hell with that I want to experience the very essence of life the life force that we may be missing so I think that's probably what Jesus is talking about when he's talking about getting to the point where we need something greater than what we're experiencing.